All right, and we yes, are, and we are indeed live. Now. Yes. Okay, folks. So, hey guys, um, here's what here's what we're going to do for all the folks that are on Discord in the game room number one. Uh, there will be some uh, echo and bits and pieces uh, for the folks that are watching from YouTube. So, uh, Brian and I are going to mute ourselves in Discord. And uh, I'll be listen we'll be both listening for questions if you have them, but you'll also be able to ask questions on the YouTube channel, uh, which I popped a link in the chat here and for Discord. Uh, you can see that link and jump jump on that and you can ask typed questions. But if you feel like you have a complicated one and need to need to ask it in uh, Discord, we'll make that work and and just make sure everyone is aware of what's going on. So I'm I'm gonna mute myself and say hi to first of all I'll say hi to doc and old guy and rodney uh and i've already said hi to mike oh. and uh <laughs> and look at mr snake Holf. or well, that what's almost looks like a snake but it's not uh so good to see you guys and i'm going to mute myself and i'm going to be talking on the uh youtube broadcast which you should have the link for in the chat in discord all right so everybody uh let's see brian are you with us i am can you hear me excellent yes i can uh welcome this is your first youtube live streaming experience you're now a professional oh thank you i'm excited <laughs> i think this is an awesome idea for you to want to try and uh, help share the passion for TCS tactical combat system for multi-man publishing uh, and we'll we'll try and uh, walk through some of this stuff together so that uh, we can all learn and I've got the vassal module up for everybody and for those folks that are watching from YouTube you're welcome to listen in there and and watch it live on vassal there's only a little bit of delay so that you won't uh, you won't miss too much uh, but uh, that should all work and then brian and i will sort of go he brian has a a, a nice agenda that i'm going to let him tell us what he's going to uh, do and then we'll kind of go from there i'm just going to briefly say hello to a few folks that have joined us so tim and uh todd good to see you uh the war uh, the wardrobe is here and <laughs> flowing robes and everything uh, we've got James and uh, Richard and John. Good to see you guys. Oh, John Haley is a TCS pro since 1994. So <laughs> now, now the pressure is really on for all of us. And of course, meandering Mike is here as well. Good to see you too. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to now, Brian, I'm going to hand over to you and let you just chit chat about how we're going to handle stuff and what, what, what we think we might try and do. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so, a uh, quick introduction. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm interested in TCS. I've collected the games for years. I've looked at the rules. I've started to digest the rules. And then over time, I've moved to other games. But I've always come back and had a deep interest in uh, playing this game. I'm interested in the scale, the tactical scale. Um, I'm also interested in... Uh, operations order. So this to me is just the perfect game system. Uh, and I appreciate everybody calling in. Uh, full transparency, I'm not at all an expert. Uh, the idea behind tonight's meeting is for uh, new players, older players uh, to come together, uh, talk about the rules, uh, network a little bit, and see if we can build community around uh, this experience so that in the future we've got more gaming. Um, what I would like to do, uh, since we have Vassal up, uh, maybe just go over Vassal. I'm hoping everybody's familiar with Vassal. I assume they are, uh, but just a few things. Um, if there are comments as we uh, cover uh, any of the talking uh, points or the subjects for tonight, uh, as long as it's manageable, feel free to uh, ask a question uh, or type in a question, and, and we'll, we'll try and address them as we go. If it becomes unmanageable, then you know I'll present information, we'll pause, and then uh, we'll try and catch everybody up with uh, 
uh, questions. And if we have to back up, we can do that. Um, if uh, you have a ser uh, the uh, TCS rules, I'm using the latest version. I believe that's version of 4.02. Um, I would like to kind of go over uh, rules starting in uh, 3.1 uh, to I think 5.1 is uh, the goal for tonight. And um, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Lee Forrester's uh, Metal on Metal, uh, the uh, uh, TCS uh, intro number two is pretty much on par with uh, kind of our agenda for tonight. Um, so this might be basic uh, for those that are familiar, which is um, kind of the point. Um, so if you have anything uh, to share, kind of point us in the right direction, that is hugely appreciated and appropriate. Again, I'm kind of starting off. <clears throat> so, you know, the intent isn't for me to demonstrate uh, the rules at the expert level. <clears throat> in fact, it's uh, kind of a, a learning experience uh, shared live right now. <laughs> and uh, discussion is... Uh, uh, expected and appreciated. So with that said, does anybody have any comments or questions before I uh, start kicking off uh, um, some of the discussion here? I think okay. you're doing good. I think, I think we got good sound from everybody, for everybody, and uh, we've got 21 folks watching on YouTube. So we'll... Oh, great. Yeah, a handful of folks from uh, from Discord as well. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of... Let's get started, and I'll, I'll let you lead off, and uh, I'll, I'll tr try and jump in and make sense if I if I can. Okay, so let's just start off with the uh, Vassal module. <clears throat> I think just to hold on. <clears throat> I think just about all of the Vassal modules uh, are are representative of the uh, TCS game series. Um, and the modules don't seem to be overly complicated in terms of um, the, the functionality uh, of the module. But um, for those that may not be uh, familiar with Vassal, um, on the top you can see we've got uh, uh, some bars. Um, let's start with the <clears throat> way to be able to sync. Um, You'll see two arrows on the left top. Uh, one points to the left, one points to the right. Uh, so if you hit that, that will allow you to see uh, that there are uh, active game rooms. And right now we have an active game room called TCS Learning Session. And there's three of us that are in that room. So you can uh, enter into the room. And uh, I believe that there is a, uh, if you need to synchronize, uh, with a player, I think you right click on a name um, and then you can uh, uh, basically join into the end of the game. That's correct. Uh, yep. <clears throat> um, one of the functions that we'll use if uh, on your keyboard, there is an alt key. So if I want to look at a, a key, I can go ahead and press alt and then left mouse. That'll uh, show that flashing red circle. So that's a pretty uh, nifty um, thing to be able to use during a game. So if, if you want to make a comment about an area of the map board, um, you're getting ready to do a move or something, you can hit that. Um, I won't go into the basic um, flow of Vassal. I want to keep this more specific to um, um, the TCS game series, but on the top here you can see uh, about still kind of to the top left, we'll have uh, rules and charts. <clears throat> so there may be times when we will refer to uh, the charts, but that's where you would find those. Uh, so just about everything that you need to play the game is represented in the Vassal module. Um, there are some housekeeping uh, options as well. So you can see we've got um, um, uh, GNC morale, uh, German Canadian, uh, remove Canadian fire, remove German fire, uh, some housekeeping things for smoke markers. Uh, so it's, as you 
get familiar with the modules, you can see there's a, a lot of utility uh, and, a, and a good way to organize uh, gameplay. So if uh, you want to have a large um, campaign map set up, this is a, a good way to hit save and you don't have to worry about the pieces getting knocked over. So that's about all I'm going to cover on um, the the module here. Uh, okay. It's it's beautiful looking module. Uh, super excited about uh, having this available to to, to do gameplay. Um, so I'll move into our pieces. We have some pieces already on the map board. Um, so um, assuming everybody can kind of see what we have here, I've got some Canadian pieces. Uh, some counters. And if we are looking at uh, section 3.1 unit types, um, some pretty basic concepts here in terms of unit types. We've got infantry, uh, weapons or guns, uh, and there's several uh, breakdowns on the guns. We've got um, um, anti-tank guns, uh, uh, mortars, um, and uh, infantry guns, which I think are um, equivalent to HE or howitzers. Uh, then we've got vehicles, which can uh, be your tanks, and then our, our carriers. So I've got some examples of the various units that are on the board. Um, I've got on the bottom, uh, the counters are in fire mode. And then on top, if you flip the counter over, uh, they are on move mode. So starting from the left, uh, we can look at some of the uh, values that are printed. Uh, we have fire value, uh, range, and then uh, our defensive uh, value or our morale, depending on what type of unit. And then our uh, vehicles and our carriers, you can see we have a red box, and those are our the steps. So some of the, uh, I think earlier games were representative of uh, one vehicle, but as the series has progressed, uh, now we have various uh, vehicles represented in the counters. So you've got uh, multiple steps. Um, so pretty basic information, uh, but it, there's a lot of detail on the counters because you'll notice that we also have colors. Uh, and as we continue to go through the rules, those colors uh, will have meaning um, and and they will be representative of uh, how we might engage uh, as well as how we might defend. So um, if we can, if you're keeping up in the rules, we'll go to um, uh, rules section 3.1e. And units are coded for firing type and class. Um, so um, area targets, and then there's also a classification for both, and we'll talk about that in a minute, um, are um, um, target types that are representative of, um, of unit formation. So basically infantry and um, these. Uh, Target types are different than point, which would be, say, a vehicle. Um, we have um, area fire, uh, which is, uh, say, uh, infantry spraying a machine gun or uh, sprayed fire, as well as HE uh, explosive fire. Um, and you'll notice that the color for our attack value is white. So that kind of indicates the type of firer. If we were to look at a point firer, um, those are for specific uh, targets. Uh, those counters uh, can penetrate armor. And the fire strength is represented with yellow. So we have a pretty good um, way to differentiate between the different fire types by color. Um, now, on the defensive side, you have area targets, uh, point targets, and then both targets. So if we look at um, morale and defensive values, um, area targets uh, 
as I had earlier described, are uh, formations uh, and the morale would be on the right. So if we see our infantry uh, counter, uh, we have a morale of one and it's in white. Uh, point targets uh, have their defensive value in yellow. And there's the concept of both targets. We have um, uh, some uh, guns uh, and can be uh, represented uh, as a both target with a uh, black number uh, outlined in yellow. So our AT gun, you can see, has a um, value of zero, but I believe that defensive value is not listed, but it's a three. Uh, but I think the, and this is where I might need a little bit of help and in interpretation, Kevin, but what does that zero indicate? Is that the um, morale or the defensive value? And is there a separation between the actual uh, gun and then the crew? Is that the explanation for an unprinted value and then a value that is printed? I think that's going to be the uh, the morale value for the, for the six pounder. I think uh, is my understanding. Okay, but I'm happy to I'm happy to be wrong on that. I'm looking here. It's, the, it's you know what? It's actually defensive strength, right? The black zero. Yeah, and I thought I heard. Yeah, yep. I, I think morale value of three is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So if we um, continue through the rules, and are there any questions or comments? I'm just kind of rolling through all of this. Um, OK. So it, if we get a 3.4, um, you know, just as a review for the colors, fire strength, uh, white is area, uh, yellow uh, represents point, um, our range, which is the uh, second number from the left. Uh, black indicates low trajectory. Uh, white indicates high trajectory. So uh, mortars would be high trajectory, but um, point fire uh, uh, would be considered low trajectory. Uh, defensive strength uh, area, uh, such as dispersed troops, would be uh, white. Um, for a point target, such as a single vehicle, would be yellow. And then the concept of both uh, would be the black with the uh, yellow border. Um, now, if we flip the counter over, the counters that are on top, we have movement. Um, so uh, white indicates uh, foot movement, black indicates wheel, and yellow indicates track. So a lot of information. What I noticed in um, on Grognards, if you look up uh, G, um, GD42, uh, that there are some files. Uh, somebody was kind enough to, and let me see if I can give them credit here, uh, to upload a, a couple of documents that kind of breaks down. Um, it's Holy Mother Goose had uploaded some um, really nice documents uh, to help uh, provide uh, information on the counters. It helps with the color uh, and provides uh, uh, information such as the steps, uh, if it's low trajectory, high trajectory, um, and uh, some information about uh, modes. So that's a good resource. If, uh, if you're learning the system like I am, uh, I found those resources on Grognard to be uh, uh, something that's useful. I've gone printed them out, laminated them, and I uh, guess enough said on that. Was there a question? No, I think you're good. I think you're good. I was just uh, confirming that I agree that they're great tool, great resources. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, the if we move to 4.0 modes, uh, fire or move, um, you know, we can see that mode as represented by what side the counter is on. Um, these uh, uh, changes in modes occur uh, during the action phase, uh, but can also occur as a result of combat. And um, uh, 
there is a cost sometimes in terms of movement uh, and sometimes there's not. So for the infantry uh, to uh, transition from move mode to fire, um, there's no uh, cost to do that. So uh, I believe the explanation is, is that uh, for the infantry to take cover, uh, it's uh, pretty intuitive for them in a combat situation. Um, but to uh, transition from fire mode to move mode, um, there is a, um, a cost of a half of the movement allowance to be able to do that. Uh, I assume that the infantry is a little reluctant to leave cover and move. Uh, but it's transverse for, um, for uh, vehicles. Um, and it's a, a one-third uh, uh, cost to the movement uh, to uh, transition um, from move to fire, but from fire to move mode, it's free. Um, and infantry also includes uh, uh, our guns, and I, uh, I believe all of our crew serve weapons, so uh, machine guns, uh, mortars, AT guns, Right. Yeah, Brian, I always think of the uh, the reasoning behind the armor cost is that it's it's kind of the shoot and scoot or the, the, mo the moving fire uh, metaphor mm -hmm. versus infantry dropping to cover, right? Uh, so it kind of helps solidify, solidify that in my mind. Yeah, I actually, I, I, I like this, uh, this rule. Uh, being former infantry myself, I can understand why the rule is in there. Um, so fire mode, um, there are some different actions that uh, can be taken in with uh, the various fire modes. So uh, suppress a fire, and this is rule 4.2. Um, so um, suppress a fire action, uh, overwatch, uh, point... Uh, fire action, um, breaching minefields, and um, observing for indirect fire. Uh, so I'm still uh, reading on the difference between these modes, um, but um, move mode can also be uh, assault, overrun, um, mount, dismount, and then breach minefield. So there are various modes uh, in assault as well as in movement. Um, and then um, 4.1 talks about stacking limits. So that's uh, 30 steps for infantry plus an additional um, six steps for vehicles or carriers. So that kind of covers the rule review that I had. Um, and again, I think a really good uh, primer or in review for what we've covered, if you haven't seen them yet, are the Lee Forster's uh, Metal on Metal TCS uh, intros. So this would be number two is, a, I think, a really good one. Um, but that's kind of the, the, the rules review that I wanted to cover tonight. Um, and there are some concepts in the TCS rules series that um, maybe new. Uh, I found them new. I haven't necessarily seen another game system that has uh, some of these concepts. So it's been interesting to read uh, the rules and to start to digest them. But what I am um, taken back by a little bit is just the depth of the information that are on the counters. And I think that's a, a good starting point is to understand um, what the information tells you and how that affects, um, you know, the various modes as well as, you know, the basic mechanics for the TCS rule system. So, Kevin, I see you're moving some counters around. Uh, do you want to kind of describe a little bit what you're doing? And um, <clears throat> um, if uh, anybody has any comments, questions, this is a good time too to kind of type those in or, or uh, call them out. Yeah, sure. So uh, by all means, folks uh, in the chat, drop in questions. I know we've got a half dozen guys on Discord. If you feel like you'd like to ask a question, then let's let's do that as well. And I'm, I'm not sure how that will carry across onto the YouTube discussion, but we'll, we'll work that out. All I was going to do and probably should 
try and keep it somewhat legit and uh, use the same formation. Uh, actually, let's just do this. It's going to grab a couple of chaps and put them in a position and let and let's execute uh, just a standard SFA or suppressing fire action uh, so that we can see how things work and what the the benefits were of cover and the uh, disadvantages of being caught moving in the open, uh, things of that nature. Let me see if I can grab another guy here. Let's put this one here. Well, looks like that's a hedge. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see if we can do it from this direction as well. So, if everyone is, I'm assuming, or I'm going to assume, <laughs> uh, if uh, if everyone's reasonably comfortable with the sequence of play, uh, you know, initiative is something that needs to be taken care of, and you, whoever has the initiative, then after you go through the artillery phase, you're then going to be looking at, you know, who whose whose action phase is going to be next, right? So you're going to roll for initiative again there, uh, and at some other point, we'll discuss command, which is a whole other exercise in of itself. But in essence, in the sequence of play, you do the command phase, the artillery and aircraft phase, and then the action phases. And once you get to the action phases, whoever has uh, the uh, initiative, and let's, for the sake of the argument, assume that it's the Germans that had the initiative, and they wish to hold this little uh, piece of property they're in here, that little uh, piece of terrain, uh, they're going to want to potentially shoot at bad guys, right? And they can execute a, a fire action on SFA, or they could uh, they could just pass and do nothing and wait for the enemy to close on them and then conduct overwatch or opportunity fire, right? So uh, the, the idea, so let's look at what a, a typical SFA would look like if we were going to shoot at this particular hex here. I'm going to, I think I'm as zoomed in as I can be, unfortunately, for you guys. There's, a, there's just a, a limit to that. <clears throat> and so this is obviously going to be a very deadly effect, uh, assuming I roll half decently and and I don't make too many mistakes on the uh, on the area modifiers. So I'm going to bring up one of the charts and we'll sort of put it to one side and walk through what uh, what a uh, fire resolution would look like. Oh my goodness, there's no zooming on that bad boy, is there? <laughs> okay, so let's just take a look from the have a look from the top. So I've got two units here. With uh, uh, this guy has a, a fire factor of seven, and the other chap has a fire factor of eight. And we're it, we're able to. We want to uh, shoot at the uh, the the unit here, uh, and we're going to be at range one, which is going to be a little bit nasty. But we'll just see what happens. So the first thing like we want to do is uh, we we tally up the number of points. And if I'm just going, to, let's just use the. Uh, the, the top unit, the seven rated unit, and we'll save that MG for later. We might want to do something else with him, uh, but let's just say that we fire the seven and uh, we would look here. Uh, am I, am I, it's not going to let me click on the charts to the actual where I'm, where I'm pointing. All right. So I've got a, a seven strength unit and each unit has uh, each infantry unit that is a full platoon versus an MG unit, which has two steps. These infantry units have five steps. So, uh, and this enemy unit also has five steps, okay? So we're looking at range of uh, zero. I'm gonna add uh, the number of infantry steps. Sorry, the range of one, I'm gonna add half the infantry steps to my firepower. So half of five is, two and a half and that rounds to, I believe we round it to three. So that's going to bring us up to 10 strength. I'm going to look at the enemy strength, enemy number of steps, and he has five and that's not going to move 
the, the column uh, or, the, or modify anything at all. You'll see the five to seven, it says zero. If I happen to have two units in that hex that weren't moving, uh, I would have 10 steps and I would have to add plus three. So I'd go, I would go from, if it was base seven, I'd go from seven, I'd go up three columns, one, two, three, up to the 14 to 16 column which would be pretty nasty, right? But there's only one unit there, so there's no there's no modifier. And so we're looking at the, at still at the seven column, but I said I'm adding half the infantry steps for three, so that brings us up to 10 strength on the nine to 10. <clears throat> I believe that's right so far. And then we're looking at the area fire range. I'm gonna look at the infantry, and it says, you know, if I'm in the hex, I'm going to get four column shifts. If I'm adjacent, I'm going to get two column shifts. So I'm going to push my, um, I'm going to push my, uh, my column up two more columns. I think I said it was 14 to 16. So I'm going to go up to 21 to 25. Now I'm going to look at the terrain and, and the, the posture of the units that we're shooting at and they're they're not moving they're in fire mode and they're in the linen factory there and we're going to i don't have the where's the terrain chart let's have a quick look and see what sort of terrain it is i'm assuming that's going to be now uh, where would that be I assume it's going to be partially protective let me see if I can find it on here. Just bear with me for a second here. Terrain effects. Buildings partially protective. Just want to make sure I was getting it right. So we're going to go to partly protective terrain, go across on the move mode, and we can see that uh, they're not moving, so that's okay. But yeah, they're in fire mode, so it's minus two. We're going to come back two columns, down to 14 to 16 from 21 to 25. And then there are other issues, other items to, to look at, uh, whether it's night, whether the fire is suppressed, whether uh, the, um, the actual unit you're trying to shoot at is, to, is suppressed as well. All of those things would uh, play a role. Uh, oh, now uh, are people saying they can't see the charts? Is that what's going on here? I'm just looking here to make sure I'm, yeah, okay, it's too fuzzy. Well, that's just, uh, uh, it's unfortunate, but if you can, you can still see this on the actual physical vassal module and follow along that way. So I, I think we ended up at the 14 to 16 column is where we ended up. So I'm going to roll 2d6, uh, sorry, I'm going to roll uh, uh, 11 through 66 with 2d6. And I roll a 42, which is a, probably going to be a pretty decent roll. And I go down uh, from 14 to 16, I drop down to the 42 to 62 and come across. And it says I lose a step. And I'm going to, uh, the, uh, the Canadians are going to lose a step and they're going to have to execute a morale check. So I'm going to add a step loss to them by doing that. And then there should be a marker underneath now. See? Oops. And now I need to make a morale check. Well, my morale is fantastic. It's one, but I've taken a step loss, so it's going to go up to two. So I'm going to go down to the morale table and look across on the two column, uh, and I'm going to roll. What I usually like to do is just roll the dice, but let's walk through it uh, anyway. But uh, I'm on the two column. It's going to go down one because I'm in partly protective or protective terrain, so I'm going to be back on the one column. <clears throat> And I don't believe there'll be any other issues there. So I'll roll 1166 again, and I'll roll 65. Not good. Uh, that is going to make us SYR. Oh, my God. All right. So now we're going to have fun. Uh, we might as well walk through this, and I'll show it to you if you're interested. Is there a marker? If I'm going too fast or people have questions, or if I'm doing something wrong and you're an expert, yell at me, it's okay. I won't be offended. I'm looking for an SYR. Well, there is no SYR marker. That's something I custom made myself. All right, so uh, here's, what, here's what we need to do here. Uh, SYR means save your save yourself or something. 
What does that mean, Brian? You, you're supposed to know all this stuff. It has so a definition. The, the save yourself retreat. <laughs> it is save yourself. Okay, good. So I am I am accurate, right? So we're going we're going to execute and save yourself retreat. The first thing uh, that happens is that we lose half our steps that we have remaining if i believe that if i recall i didn't think we could actually get into this tonight but uh <laughs> but so i have four left i believe i'm gonna have to lose another two and so I, i'm just gonna grab a marker here this is we're doing a syr here let me see if i can find a little step loss marker and increase it we're going to take two additional step step losses because we're retreating and it represents the sort of the, the mayhem of the retreat and, and and getting shot at and all that sort of fun stuff so we would now have three steps lost and these guys have to retreat three hexes or into partial uh, into protective or partially protective terrain so we would go one now, moving there is actually great because I would not receive any overwatch fire from any enemy units that could see me retreating, right? But if I, if I retreated here, these chaps here could shoot at me again. So I, I wouldn't want to do that, right? I, would, I don't, I don't want to uh, be shot at by this unit or combined fire from the units, all the units in that hex at that hex that would be a, what's called the bad thing and uh, not very conducive to health right so one two they're going to be they're out of range of everybody or out of sight of everybody else that's on the map so they would then if that's not partially protective i don't know if that terrain is or not i don't recall from this module but let's just say they have to move the third hex and then move to there uh so they would be now I believe they become suppressed. I think that's right, isn't it, uh, Brian? Yep. So that I think we also yes, and I believe we also flip them over to. Oh, uh, good flip to move mode. Yeah. Yep. Good catch. There we go. Flip to move so mode. For those that are trying to follow, this is uh, section seventeen point four. I did set the Canucks up, Mike. Uh, sorry, but. Uh, you know, that's what they're, as an Australian, that's what we use them for. So, <laughs> all right. So that, we would now mark this chap here. Uh, is there no, do I really have to drag a fired marker out? Looks like I do. All right. Bear with me while I find something. Firing, fired, where is the fired marker? All right. Let me just flip that. There we go. Fired. All right. So that chat there has fired. Now let let's let's assume for sake of the argument that uh, that fire happened, that unit has fired. It's the end of the Germans activation and now the allies say, well, gee, you know, we want to, let's try and get in that hex there. Cause uh, the only unit that could overwatch at me now is, is this particular guy here, right? So he, he hasn't fired yet. So maybe I can, maybe I could, uh, and this is not advisable, uh, tactical <laughs> uh, uh, suggestion. You, you want to suppress your enemy before you try and close assault them. If I wanted to close assault these guys, I could protect, potentially use this unit and go uh, move one, two, three, and try and close assault, right? But each hex I move, I move here, one, this, this fella here is going to get a chance to shoot at me. And he'll also get a chance to shoot at me even if he had fired. Uh, and that's just a, a, an exception to the rules. Uh, because they're MG units, I believe that they, get, unless that's a module specific rule, but I believe that they will be allowed to overwatch fire, even though they've already fired in, in the turn. Nevertheless, uh, we, we would take fire in this hex 
And if we survived that fire and weren't suppressed and still wanted to keep going, we would move again and take fire again. And then we would then enter into the assault phase, which or an assault action, which we're not going to do right now, but that's that would be the the Overwatch capability. Now, similar similarly, if I had other units that had not moved or or who were eligible to fire, and who had a decent fire rating, let's see if I can grab another guy in here. Hey, Kev, I think if you have um, a uh, save yourself retreat as a result of a um, combat, then I believe that stack isn't suppressed. It's not suppressed. It's just it yep. just moved, is it? Yep. And, okay, yeah, great. And the, Good catch. Mm -hmm. Good catch. I think it's a and maybe a Malay that you're uh, you're suppressed. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, it's been a while, but okay. Good catch. Infantry will go into fire mode once they stop in, uh, moving in SYR. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, Scott. Uh, so, so when Richard actually makes a good point about losing half, and I and I would need to double check that as well. But I thought all SYRs, unless they were voluntary, you had to lose half. But that could be. Yep. Uh, he's. Uh, uh, Richard is suggesting that it's only for paralyzed units. So, nevertheless, uh, let's focus on the mecha the mechanic of taking taking the shots, right? Uh, versus uh, the SYR result, and uh, we can always clean that up when we uh, when we do the next session. The next session, but that would be. That would be a basic SFA, right? Your your units are able to. Here we go. Uh, the, you know, you can fire or you can withhold your fire and then look for opportunities to Overwatch as the enemy advances. Yeah, that that's the two fundamental bits of data that you should be getting comfortable with, and ch moving in the open. As like any sensible tactical game is a bad thing. Um, comments or questions, Brian? No, this is great. Um, this is exactly what I needed. Okay. All right. So, so I, I know that was a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, as I say, argy bargy, but we'll uh, <laughs> let's let's um let's see what else could we do here. Um, I guess point uh, point fires. Do we want to have a look at those and see if I can get that half right as well? Uh, let's see if we can grab a German vehicle of some type. Um, something relatively ineffective. No. Wow, these are all really nice units. Uh, all right, I guess we're just gonna have to suck it up. So let's see. All right, so I'm just I'm just looking at the comments here, and making sure that. Uh, we're doing this right. I got Scott's making comments here. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of empathy for the Canadians right now. Yeah, yeah, there <laughs> probably are. There probably is. All right, uh, let's push these guys out a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's flip this guy to fire mode. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Need to put him in range. Uh, so let's see if we can get a point fire done here. And quite frankly, I have not played a lot with the armor. Uh, I played Ariete, but uh, 
you know, most of these battles end up being a lot of a lot of infantry action. So let's but let's just walk through it. So let's have a Sherman shooting at this uh, Panther unit. And let me just grab my little chart here, my little cheat sheet. We're looking at uh, this is two Panthers with a defense of five. And I have three Shermans. And we have uh, an attack value of three and a range of five. So uh, let's just walk through this. We're, we're looking at we would look at the point fire differential table and we take the lowest p fire strength minus the best p fire defense so the lowest strength is three and the highest defense is five it's going to give us a minus two uh differential right and we're going to go down to differential of minus two that's going to have a minus four modifier i don't know i know that's really hard to read guys but that's what it says a minus four modifier so I'm going to go over to the point fire uh, combat results table, which happens to be the same table as the SFA table, but I'm looking at the column, uh, the row underneath it that has no yellow highlighting. And I'm looking at the P fire steps and I have three steps. So I go to the three column. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, use that column. And then I'm going to drop, what did I say? Four, four columns, one, now, do you now? This is where I would need to look up to confirm, but I believe I count all of the columns in between the point fire steps, and not just the point fire steps. So to be one, two, three, four, we may end up on the eleven on the uh, on the five column here, I think. But I need to I need to check that. So let me just check that real quick and make sure that I'm not. I am not uh, misleading you entirely. Area fires, point fires. And we've also got to adjust for range as well. We're going to do that in a second. That doesn't seem to be, well, this is just laid out a bit differently. That's all. All right. Uh, point fires. Once PFA is being completed, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That is not it. Well, uh, here we go. Point five modifiers. Rule twelve point one. And what we want to do is make sure that we're using the right number of columns. And let's go from there. If anyone else can see it, please let me know. Um, point five weapon range categories, differential. Yeah, I think we end up. I think we end up on that five column, but we need to look at nominal range first. And I, I'm looking for where that. Here it is, point fire range is nominal plus three. So we, we were on the five, gonna go back up one, two, three. We would end up on the nine to 10, I believe. I think that sounds right. But I'm, I'm, this is where I'm actually uncertain. Or Richard is telling me that it's all columns. So I think we're good to go. So nine to 10 column, I'm gonna roll 1166. And so there's only two things you're looking at when you're doing P fires, right? You're looking at the point fire differential amount, taking the, the weakest, fire strength against the best defense and coming up with the differential. Then you look at the number of steps, how many steps you have actually shooting, look at the range modifier, and then you're pretty much good to go unless you, you're lucky enough to get a uh, crossfire. And uh, I, don't, I don't think we're gonna, you won't pick up any terrain or posture modifiers for this, I don't believe, for this particular attack. So, that would leave us on the nine to 10, I, I think is what I said. And we're gonna roll uh, 1166. 34, 34 is gonna be a morale check, which will be a uh, no effect for point fire, I think. 
That's right, because point fives never cause morale checks. And here we go, 12.2 point five column shifts use all the columns of the fire table, not just those columns that have a value of, on the number of P fires. So 12.2 G. Thank you, Richard. You are 100% accurate. We love you. <laughs> Uh, so that was a that was a uh, that would have been one of the actions. So tanks are a little bit different when they when they move and activate uh, because they they get to break their activities up over the course of the action phase into three buckets of, of activity. They can move, they can fire, they can move and fire, uh, and it costs them movement points to flip from one one mode to the other, as we've discussed. Uh, but uh, let's just say that was the last thing that this uh, this guy was able to do, and he's had his shot, and we've now have an opportunity to fire back with the uh, with the panther. The panther has three actions. He's he's going to uh, he's going to move a little closer and flip to fire, and that and he's still going to have one action left, I think, right? because there's three, and he could fire it to pretty close range and let's see what that tank might end up doing to this sherman with a firepower of five versus defense of three but with just two steps shooting so we would take the lowest fire strength uh versus the best defensive strength well the lowest fire strength is is my is my five for the german versus defensive three sorry it would be a plus two so I would get plus two on the on the on the column modifiers. So we would go to the number of P fire steps two and go up two columns, which would end up actually on the three P fire step column. But we're at uh, we're at close range, I believe, because that's going to be less than half, and that's going to pop us up pop us up another five one two three four five four that's nasty isn't it it's going to put us on the nine to ten column on the p5 steps there's no more no other modifiers i don't believe yeah i'm not i am not uh john i'm not uh doing an overwatch i'm i'm just demonstrating uh, a fire and a move <clears throat> It's all good. We're just we're just demonstrating the capabilities here. So let's not let's not uh, get upset about my my tactics. So I roll a sixty two. I said I was on the nine to nine to ten column. That's going to be four steps. So all three of those steps would be eliminated, and that unit would be dead as a doornail. Uh, nasty die rolling there. Sorry about that, <laughs> Canadians. Uh, but. Uh, but as as uh, John mentioned, what we what we could be doing here is if we had sat back wherever we were, one, two, three, four, five, back here, and were in Overwatch. Let's just do this here. Get rid of that. We would uh, we would potentially be able to return fire back at this chap. And go through that same exercise, but this time be at normal range, and 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 shoot then. Brian, what else did we want to do? Given we're almost up on an hour, and if we have well, think, questions, the folks have questions. Yeah, I think we've covered a lot of information. Had some examples, uh, so I'm kind of happy with the progress that we've made tonight. I hope this was useful for people that have joined us tonight. Um, I'd be interested to know if they want us to continue moving through the rules and have more of these. Um, I And this was enjoyable. And you, how I see my learning with TCS is through repetition, diving into the rules and getting into this. It's very much a, uh, a lot of muscle memory here. And what, once you get the basics down, uh, particularly with assaults and and uh, the how to execute SYRs correctly, uh, mm -hmm. how to do Overwatch properly, and 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 where you position units to take advantage of Overwatch. All those things will really start to reveal lots and lots of interesting tactical choice for for players as they're trying to experience the game, and it's it it becomes much less of a 
get a big stack and try and kill things uh, versus, uh, you know, finessing your way into suppressing the enemy, fixing them in place, and then then finishing them off. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm seeing some positive uh, remarks. Uh, so it looks like uh, uh, this is an enjoyable session and we should try and figure out how to do more of these. And, you know, based off of what we covered, I think the only thing left to do is to bury some Canadians tonight. Yeah, there was a little bit of a uh, little bit of bad luck there on top of that. <laughs> uh, and plus a little fortuitous uh, uh, positioning uh, and other bits. But yeah, <laughs> not that I bear any Canadians, any grudges at all. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, Doc. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to end the broadcast here. And if Brian, if you just want to hang on one sec before you dial off, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, everybody, and thanks for watching. Thank you, everybody.